Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this special moment at Wabash College. My name is Greg Redding. I'm a Wabash alumnus from the class of 1988. I've been a German professor here since 2002, and I'm serving this year as Dean of Students. To the family and friends watching our live stream, thank you for participating, virtually at least, in this historic rite of passage for Wabash men, and for your part in helping these young men reach this important milestone in their lives. The old saying, may you live in interesting times, sounds at first like a blessing, but is actually used as an ironic curse, the idea being that interesting times are those shaped by hardship, disruption, and chaos. We most definitely live in interesting times. The year 2020 has been one for the history books. This pandemic and the economic turmoil that followed have presented challenges that are unprecedented in our lifetime. But the Wabash culture is one that embraces challenges such as this. For we know that every challenge presents opportunities opportunities for personal growth, for discovering new ways of doing things, and for honing in on what is truly important in our lives. Men of the class of 2024, this ringing in ceremony is a tradition that ties you directly to the first 12 students to enroll at Wabash some 187 years ago. In the many years between you and those first Wabash men, this college has faced countless challenges. And each challenge has been met with success by the students, faculty, and staff who came before us. Wabash is a great institution today because our predecessors were able to rise to the occasion and not only navigate the college through the crisis of the moment, but make it better along the way. This is now your task. Over the summer, you have received communications from us that explain what we need you to do to ensure that we can function as a residential college this year. I challenge each of you to put an A-plus effort into meeting the expectations for healthy living and learning that we have set for you. I want you to demand excellence from yourself and your classmates I want you to show the fighting spirit that Wabash students are known for. And I want Wabash students in the distant future to look back with respect and admiration for the way you overcame the challenges that this academic year will present. The spirit of Wabash is embodied in our beloved fight song. It is tradition for the Glee Club to lead us in singing Old Wabash at the ringing in ceremony. Present circumstances prevent them from being here in person, but fortunately we have that virtual technology that predates Zoom, Teams, and Twitch, an audio recording of the Glee Club performing Old Wabash. If you do not yet know the lyrics, you can find them on the first page of your orientation booklet. Please stand for Old Wabash.
Please be seated. Each of you should learn the words to Old Wabash, which we believe to be the longest college fight song in the country. It's not yet clear how we will test your knowledge of the song at the annual Chapel Sing competition, but you'll quickly discover how frequently and enthusiastically we sing our fight song. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce our Dean for Enrollment Management, Mr. Chip Timmons. An alumnus from the class of 1996, Chip is here representing all those affiliated with the effort to recruit each of you to our college. In order that he may welcome you and describe you a bit to one another, please welcome Mr. Chip Timmons. I don't know about all of you, but um, there were times where I felt like this day would never get here, and other times I felt like it was coming up way too fast. And that was just this week, um, but um, we're so glad you guys are all here today, and uh, I want to welcome all those family members and students who can't be with us personally today. So when I was young, my mom would remind me that you can choose your friends, but you can't choose your family. Now normally this was because somebody said something foolish at a family gathering, maybe my dad was yelling at a referee, but you know, even though she's watching today probably, I'm going to say that she's wrong. You can choose your family. Now you young men who are about to be rung in did more than choose a college. You chose a family, and to all those moms, dads, brothers, sisters, grandma, grandpas, uncles, and aunts watching with us today, when these young men chose to enroll at Wabash College, you joined our family too. So now I need to tell the world a little bit more about the 255 men joining our family today. You have an average GPA of a 3.75. You have an average SAT score of 1,230. 10 of you are valedictorians. Eight of you are Eagle Scouts. You hail from eight countries and 23 states. If you graduated from Carmel, Cathedral, Crawfordsville, Roncalli, or Southmont High Schools, you're here with at least five of your fellow Greyhounds, Fighting Irish, Athenians, Rebels, and Mounties. And if this whole mascot thing interests you like it does this Frankfurt hot dog and Wabash College Little Giant, we also have a member of the Green Wave, four Shamrocks, three Brickies, two Red Ramblers, two Cavemen, and a Jeep, a Meteor, a Railroader, and a Unicorn. So I'll let you and Siri figure out where everybody went to high school. 32 of you are legacies, so you are already in our family. And our next family gathering, if someone calls for Jacob, 10 of you should answer. And Alex, the same goes for the seven of you. And families love to celebrate birthdays. Five of you share a birthday with a, with a sibling. So there's one set of twins, two halves of two sets of twins, and one third of a set of triplets in this class. Five of you share a birthday on December 5th. And uh, where are Troy Brown and Brian Dobbles? Can you raise your hand? All right, you guys share a birthday on April 17th. There's a staff member I know who has the same birthday, and he gets, he gets donuts delivered to his office every birthday, one donut for every year. So you're welcome to join me on our birthday to help me eat 47 donuts on April 17th. And how about Tommy Bellarin? Where are you? It's Tommy's birthday. Oh, wait. You thought old Wabash was just to practice. We're warming up. Tommy, will you stand? Let's all wish him a happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Tommy. Happy birthday to you. Well, well done, and I'm not surprised. This is a class filled with performers and people who love to entertain, including the one of you who's a magician, the one of you who played the role of Beast in your school's production of Beauty and the Beast, the classmate who starred in a reality TV show, one of you who directed, choreographed, costumed, and directed your high school production of Hairspray. I'm going to guess you probably made popcorn and sold tickets, but you didn't list that in your application. Um, but you, you appear to be a man of many talents. And speaking of talented men who like to entertain crowds, 
Among you is the 2019 Junior Auctioneer World Champion. Now, if we needed musical accompaniment for our, uh, to wish Tommy a happy birthday, we could have called on the three violinists in the class, the two members of a cappella groups, the cellist, the bass guitar player, the four-year sousaphone playing member of the Wabash College pep band, the guy who can beatbox, and my favorite, the guy who can play rock star by Nickelback on his harmonica. Find that guy and prove if he can really do it. But yes, you're talented, but you're also very tough. Your essays told stories of your Wabash Always Fights attitude. One of you suffered five concussions. Another has broken both collarbones, one of them twice. One of you recovered from open heart surgery, and another battled Crohn's disease, but you both made your way back to the field of competition. Two of you are cancer survivors. You displayed compassion and rallied to support and serve others in need. One of you started an anti-bullying program for your school. Another led a service project that sent 300,000 bottles of water to Flint, Michigan. Several of you took part in mission trips to locations like Peru, Romania, Spain, and locations all around the US. When others are struggling or in need of help, as a group, you tend to respond with, what can I do to help? So we're going to close with a quick quiz. And uh, I'm going to ask you a series of questions. So if you can answer one question correctly, or if you can answer with yes, I want you to raise your hand. If you can answer a second question with yes, I'd like you to stand up. And everybody's going to pass this test. So as you concluded your college search this spring, did you attend one of our virtual classes? Did you attend a virtual curriculum overview? Did you attend the housing and residential life webinar? Did you attend our Q&A with the deans? Did you attend or enroll in the COVID and liberal arts class? OK, you got people standing up now. Did you attend our Zoom meeting with pre-law students and Wabash alumni lawyers? Did you attend our Zoom meeting with pre-health faculty, staff, students, and Wabash alumni doctors? How about your parents? Did your parents attend our virtual student parent panel? And did you or any of your members of your family attend our panel of native Spanish speakers featuring Wabash faculty, staff, alumni, and students? Did you get a call or a text or an email from a Wabash alumnus or a Wabash trustee, a Wabash parent, a current student reach out to you? How about a faculty or staff member who does not have the words coach, admissions, or financial aid in his or her job title? Just take a look around. Look how many people are out of their seats. And you may be seated now, gentlemen. When this pandemic forced us to close our campus and, close and cancel our visit pro programs, the collective Wabash family came to my office and said, what can we do to help? All of those events I listed were not on the books or scheduled by March 1st of this year. For my colleagues in enrollment and athletics, it's our job to, con to connect and uh, stay connected to our prospective students. But, but for other members of the Wabash family, they sought out ways and created ways to engage with you, educate you, and welcome you. And they did it because they will always do whatever they, can, whatever they can to support our Wabash family. A family provides support in times of grief, uncertainty, triumph, and celebration. We'll experience all of that and more this year. And soon you will officially join the Wabash family, but I wanted you to know that your Wabash family has been looking out for you long before you set foot on this campus. Family is forever, and Wabash is forever. Thank you so much, Chip. You and your team have done remarkable work in the most difficult of circumstances to show this entering class the value of a Wabash education. You know, yesterday evening, I introduced you new students to some words of wisdom that we live by at Wabash. Most important among them are the gentleman's rule, which states simply that the student is expected to conduct himself at all times, both on and off campus, as a gentleman and responsible citizen, and the college mission, which states that Wabash College educates men to think critically, act responsibly, lead effectively, and live humanely. In your years at Wabash, you will come to internalize these guiding principles and you will find that they continue to shape who you are long after college days are past. It's been my privilege to know many Wabash alumni 
from all eras and all walks of life. Through their commitment to service, their professional accomplishments, and their devotion to alma mater, I've seen how they live the values of the college mission and the gentleman's rule, even decades after their student years. It's no surprise then that we have the top ranked alumni network in the country. We have the most passionate, most dedicated, and most engaged alumni that you can imagine. No one knows that better than those who serve on the board of directors for our alumni body, the National Association of Wabash Men, or NAWM. Here to speak on behalf of our alumni and welcome the class of 2024 into the Brotherhood is Mr. Mark Nichols, Wabash class of 1992 and current president of the NAWM. Thank you, Dean Redding, good evening. Gentlemen, can you hear the silence? Listen closely. If you're silent and really listening, then that sound you hear, faint and distant, are the footsteps of those who came before you. They gather as ghosts on this mall and in the classrooms, in the fraternities and in the dorms, Faintly, they whisper the sounds of nearly two centuries of this college's existence. They're not loud stiff footsteps, but each was made by a little giant. You've seen evidence of or heard footsteps like these all of your lives. Maybe the footsteps owners lacked identity at times, but they've been there all along. Every success you've ever achieved, every ounce of love you've ever felt, every failure you've ever encountered were made more successful more loving or less failing because of these footsteps. They, of course, belong to your mom or your dad, to your brother or your sister, perhaps through the wise word of a grandparent, a teacher, or a coach, or more likely the result from and the hallmark of a true friendship. Those footsteps helped lead you here, to this place, this college, the next pit stop on your journey to becoming a man, and all that becoming a man truly means. Being a man would not be about the bravado or the machismo of your maleness, although I'm sure there'll be plenty of that over the course of the next four years, but of learning to be a good and engaged global, national, and local citizen, and a good friend, of developing into a caring and generous spouse, and a kind and loving father, of learning how to be a gentle and understanding boss, and a nurturing and reliable presence for those who will come to rely, excuse me, rely upon your actions and your words. This is what true manhood is and what you will learn at this college. In the turbulent times in which we live, becoming a man means ensuring that we don't become, as the writer Paul Monet once described it, quote, creatures of the cruelties we witness. Undoubtedly, most of you have great examples of what it means to be a good man in your homes and lives as you sit here now, and hopefully they will continue to play that role for you long after you leave. But today, the fight to make you into the best man you can be is now joined by the amazing faculty who will push you so you may discover what you can achieve, by the coaching staff who will test some of you and your skills in ways you haven't begun to tap. To get something you've never had, the actor Denzel Washington said to a student body similar to this one, you have to do something you've never done. That's what these next four years will be about, trying new things, maybe failing at some things. Now, I can feel your family agitating in their seats watching this at home, imploring me to add this caveat. Do not fail out of college, all right? Go to class, sitting in a now socially acceptable distance in the first couple of rows, take good notes, review those notes nightly and weekly. Nonetheless, do things you've never done in order to find out what you're truly capable of doing. And in the process, develop a passion that will take you far beyond your wildest dreams. There is no passion to be found playing small, said Nelson Mandela, and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. Never choose a career, or anything really, just for money. Find your passion, hone it into a top class expertise, and I guarantee you money will follow. People will always pay money, top dollar usually, to someone they consider to be the best at something. Of course, the best plumber may not be what Michael Jordan earned during his reign as the world's best basketball player, 
But I assure you, if plumbing is your desired profession and you become the best at it, you will earn whatever is considered top dollar for that vocation. Next, know that your fellow classmates will become some of your greatest and most frequent teachers in the classroom and in life. Take a look around. Look closely at each other. These are your competitors and your future best friends. The guy you'll ask to be the best man at your wedding and the godfather of your children. The men whose tips on your resume will help you get that long for but difficult to attain job. They will be there for you in your life's highs and lows and there will be plenty of both. I know because some of the, my best friends, the men whom I serve as godfather to their children, stood by as the best man at their weddings. Men with whom I've shared tears and the heartiest of laughs started right here in these pews or classrooms or fields. There is much diversity among you as Dean Timmons has already conveyed, but there is so much more. Diversity of thought for sure, but also a political persuasion of different countries, cultures, races, religions, and sexual orientations to name but a few. Ensure your friends reflect the diversity I assure you will enrich your lives on this campus and after you leave it. Get to know these other people. As someone who spends a lot of time traveling the globe, well, back when that was a thing, <laughs> I can attest that the beauty of getting to know cultures unlike yours and seeing for a moment the world through their perspective is that you, they help you see the world anew and become just a bit less dogmatic about your own worldview. And the last point on this, get involved. Few people learn things by sitting on the sidelines. Play a sport, join the glee club, take an immersion trip, or put your faith into action and not just in prayers. These will all deepen your Wabash experience and ultimately will make you a better student, a better man, a better citizen, and a better alumnus. Now, a couple more points I feel I'd be remiss in not discussing here today. Who you will become and how you will be remembered will not just rest on the type of men you'll be professionally, but how you will manifest other traits important in the development of you as a man. In other words, here at Wabash is where you will take deeper strides in developing what will become known as your reputation. Now, back in high school at home, perhaps your mistakes in life might be dismissed as youthful indiscretions. You might be forgiven the occasional childish thing you do with two, three, or more chances. That will not be the case going forward. President Feller and Dean Redding, I assure you, will limit the number of chances you get in trying to do the right thing, the adult thing. They will raise the bar of expectations, and therefore so should you, of yourselves and of each other. And future employers, like me, will limit them even more if we give you a chance at all, if a bad reputation precedes you. We do our homework on you, too. Who you are as a person is as important, perhaps more so, as what you do with your career. And all of you are good young men. If you weren't, you wouldn't be here. But you're not saints, of course. A <laughs> few of us are. That's one of the reasons we have a dean of students. <laughs> but becoming a Wabash man also means not forgetting your values. It means extending the virtues of what your family has done their level best to instill in you. Honesty, intellectual rigor, humanity, leadership. And these values deserve, nay, they demand that you remember and exhibit them. As legendary Wabash professor William Plaker, himself a class of 1970 alum, said succinctly in 1981, we must find occasion to talk about values, to make clear that Wabash men who turned out to be crooks or bigots represent not only a personal disappointment, but an educational failure. Ethics, Plaker continued, isn't just a frosting on the educational cake, easy to eliminate for those on a value-free diet. It must be an integral part of every aspect of our kind of liberal arts education. These must be the hallmarks of a Wabash man, your Wabash education, yours and our reputation as an institution. As Professor Plaker concluded on that day in 1981, it only takes a few educated people to make a difference. And if in the years ahead, some of those few are not graduates of Wabash College, including, I would add, all of you gentlemen starting your journey to becoming a man and seated on this mall today, you will have failed to be worthy of the tradition you stand to inherit. 
These are the footsteps in which you follow and how you will create footsteps of your own. More than 14,000 living alumni of this college await your call, your email, your Facebook, or LinkedIn request. Like your family, teachers, coaches, and friends, we too offer what we can for those of you willing to extend an invitation to become perhaps your mentor, your teacher, maybe even your lifelong friend. No one gets to this place or out of it without a lot of help. We, like your family and friends back home and your former teachers and coaches who push you to get to this level, want to see you become what we believe you're capable of being. Yes, sometimes that may come easily. Other times it may come with great struggle. But I assure you, there are people whose footsteps have already laid a path to the life and the person you want to be. You'll need to put in the work in actually achieving the life you want and then becoming the man you want to be. But let us help show you some ways forward. Start with your faculty advisor, then career services. Your family watching at home may be crying today as the boy they nurtured into adulthood takes his biggest steps yet into manhood. But trust me, don't let the tears fool you. They want you to get a job and move out at some point and probably sooner rather than later. <laughs> know everyone in this community is here to help you, not to do for you, because the doing is on you now, but to provide guidance and experience. And finally, when you do graduate from this wonderful institution, attain that great job you've always wanted and set out free to explore the world, know that you will also have another obligation. As the Nobel laureate Toni Morrison once put it, when you get these jobs that you have so brilliantly been trained for, just remember that your real job is that if you are free, you need to free somebody else. If you have some power, then your job is to empower somebody else. That is what being an alum will mean and what we alumni hope to do here, empower you. I look forward to meeting as many of you as I can. Don't be bashful about introducing yourself to me or any other alum. We truly want to get to know you. Let us know how we can help. We can't guarantee success, but sometimes we can set you on the right path. Welcome to Wabash, gentlemen, and to your family, we welcome you with open arms and to our family. Thank you. Thank you for those words of wisdom, Mark, and, and thanks to all the members of the NAWM for the essential work that they do uh, to support Wabash students. And now it is my distinct honor and privilege to introduce to you the 17th president of Wabash College, Dr. Scott Feller. President Feller has just begun his first year of service as president of Wabash, but he has been a leader at this college for over 20 years, first as a professor of chemistry and more recently as dean of the college. You could not be in more capable hands as you begin your time at Wabash. Please welcome our 17th president, Dr. Scott Feller. <sighs> Lately, it occurs to me what a long, strange trip it's been. Perhaps you know this line from the song Truckin' by the Grateful Dead, or maybe you were lucky enough not to endure hours of your parents' classic rock playlist as a kid. My own children were not so lucky. They would know this line from the chorus of one of the Dead's most popular songs, even if they didn't know that What a Long Strange Trip It's Been was the title of the Dead's greatest hits album released. 44 years ago, next week. But even if you didn't know the song, hopefully that phrase resonates with everyone here tonight. Whether we're talking about the last six months of living in a COVID-19 pandemic, or looking back on the roughly 18 years you've lived to get to this critical moment in time. Think about that and rewind to one year ago. You would never have believed me if I'd told you that your last year in high school would have no senior prom or that your graduation would be virtual and void of the hugs from teachers, coaches, classmates, and grandparents. What a long, strange trip indeed. I suspect that as your parents are watching this tradition-rich ceremony, live streamed for the first time ever, 
They're probably thinking the same thing. What a trip. Though the truth is most of them wouldn't use the word long when talking about the strange trip that's been your lives. As you will one day learn, time with your kids moves at warp speed. One day you're driving your son to soccer lessons and the next thing you know, he's off to college. Here's a warning for mom and dad from the parent of two recent college graduates. Uh, the pace doesn't get any better. But on this, your first day as real Wabash men, think about your parents, all the sacrifices they made to get you to this point in your lives. Piano lessons, math homework, travel ball, literally hundreds of events. They showed up. They also showered you with love, encouragement, passion, drive, and the confidence that you could do everything it takes to become a Wabash man, to make the bold choice to select a college that calls you to be a gentleman and a responsible citizen. So please join me in saluting your families and thanking them with a, rounding, a round of applause. Gentlemen, today is one of the most important days of your lives. Today you become a Wabash man. You begin at an unusual moment in time, to say the least, a time when many opportunities have been taken away from us by a global pandemic. But this moment will pass, and I want you to look forward as well today. How will you ensure that four years from now, you're not looking back with regret at opportunities lost? not from COVID, but lost because you didn't step forward to embrace them. I want you to listen carefully. How you define the trip you will take over the next four years is entirely up to you. Build lifelong relationships with roommates, fraternity brothers, teammates. Take seriously the offer of open office hours by your professors. You will discover that our fact are genuinely accessible, they care deeply about your intellectual and social growth over the next four years and long after that. Join clubs, sing, get involved in theater or politics, intern in a professor's lab, compete, engage with the nation's number one alumni network, fill your life with challenge, opportunity, and joy. Make this trip your Wabash journey, enriching, engaging, and intellectually challenging in life-changing ways. I want to speak for just a moment on why the liberal arts education you're going to receive here is so utterly important at this critical point in our nation's history. I had the chance to meet New York Times columnist David Brooks when he visited campus a little over a year ago. He had just finished writing a book, the Second Mountain, A Quest for a Moral Life, which is more or less a how-to guide on living for a cause larger than yourself. A couple of months ago, Mr. Brooks wrote a column in the New York Times about leadership in times of crisis, times exactly like the ones we're living through at this very moment. He specifically mentioned the thoughtful leadership of Abraham Lincoln after Gettysburg, of Ronald Reagan after the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster, and Barack Obama after the Sandy Hook school shooting. In times of hardships, he wrote, real leaders re-articulate the purpose of America, why we endure these hardships, and what good we will make out of them. He also pointed out how many of our nation's great leaders received educations that focused on character formation above all else. Brooks wrote, they were trained by people who assumed that life would throw up hard and unexpected tests. And it was the job of a school to produce young people who would be, quote, acceptable at a dance, invaluable in a shipwreck. While other colleges might articulate more detailed student learning outcomes, I will be pleased if you leave here in four years as someone that those around you describe 
as acceptable at a dance and invaluable at a shipwreck. I point this out because over the course of this week you will learn that a culture of personal responsibility is at the very center of your educational experience. Yes, we want you to learn to think critically, act responsibly, lead effectively, live humanely, but we want you to do those things with integrity and a sense of purpose. We want your Wabash trip to be a quest for a moral life. And that's why biology and mathematics majors will study the great works of literature. That's why theater majors need to develop problem-solving skills learned in laboratories. That's why all of you will come to understand languages and cultures far different from your own. That's why we will ask all of you to look in a mirror and ask yourselves important questions like, Who am I? Why am I here? How can I serve others? Years from now, some of you will be doctors and researchers developing vaccines for even more novel viruses than this coronavirus that's taken so many lives. Some of you will run the drug companies that develop, test, and market those vaccines. Others of you will be in positions of public power, charged to make critical and ethical decisions on behalf of those whose voices are silenced. Your Wabash education will guide you no matter what vocation you're called to serve. David Brooks got it right when he wrote, Right now, science and the humanities should be in lockstep. Science producing vaccine with the humanities stocking leaders and citizens with the capabilities of resilience, care, and collaboration until those vaccines come. I promise you... If you're all in at Wabash, you will develop the capacities of resilience, care, and collaboration that will prepare you to be the leaders our world so desperately needs. I want to retreat for a moment to focus on the underlying element of our college's community. Beyond the incredible and accessible professors, caring staff, limitless opportunities to be engaged and involved, and the liberal arts education that you'll receive. The linchpin that allows Wabash to work so well against such difficult odds is our gentleman's rule. You've heard and will hear much more about the rule and what it means to be a gentleman and responsible citizen. As Dean Redding mentioned, last month I became the first Wabash president to rise from the ranks of the faculty since our ninth president, Byron Trippett, over 60 years ago. I've been reading his book, Wabash on My Mind, to prepare for this new role. Trippett writes about our gentleman's rule, which he credited to George Valentine Kendall, who served this college as an English professor from 1920 until 1957 and was our dean, the only dean, for 16 of those years. President Trippett called Dean Kendall the most civilized man I've ever known. But to better understand Dean Kendall, you need to know that during World War I, he served in France and taught soldiers how to use artillery weapons. Needless to say, when he arrived at Wabash after the war, he wasn't, being, he wasn't interested in being soft on his students. He was clear in articulating his expectations for Wabash men and the types of behavior that would be tolerated. While it was not formally called the gentleman's rule back then, Dean Kendall insisted that Wabash men behave as gentlemen at all times. President Trippett wrote about the gentleman's rule saying, it was a philosophy which predisposed that students were adults, not children, and that they were able to distinguish between right and wrong and that they were aware of their responsibility for the consequences of their behavior. Certainly society has changed a great deal in the nearly hundred years since Dean Kendall had those life-changing conversations with his Wabash men about right and wrong and all the gray areas in between. But the beauty of our code of conduct is that it's strong enough, indeed broad enough, to accommodate those changes. So while our rule does not change, the way we articulate it, discuss it, and understand it adapts to the needs 
of the campus and the time. This is one of those times. We are in the midst of a pandemic unlike any of us have ever known. This year, at this very moment, our rule is much of, as much about your role in protecting the lives of those around you as it is about your own behavior. We're all in this together. Wabash together. Men of Wabash, from this moment forward, you will be treated as adults. You will be held accountable for your actions. You will strive for higher standards than your high school friends attending lesser institutions. You will graduate from Wabash armed with a character-based education that will put you on a path for success. And that's how this place works. You'll receive an exceptional liberal arts education. You will lead full engaged lives here. You will make friends you will lean on in times of crisis and love in times of joy over the arc of your lives. You'll be challenged by your professors in the classroom, by your mentors all across campus, and by the men you live and learn with. You will aspire to be, indeed you will become, gentlemen and responsible citizens. That's why I've believed since last March that we could be together today in residence at Wabash College in the midst of a frightening pandemic because I have such incredible faith in the goodness, the greatness of Wabash men. After 22 years, I know that you will rise to the occasion and meet this difficult challenge with grit and determination, but also with patience, compassion, authenticity, and vulnerability. I challenge you to live up to our high expectations set forth in the, our mission and gentlemen's rule today and for the rest of your lives. If you're prepared to take up this challenge, to determine the man you want to be, to take on the responsibility of your own lives and the lives of your brothers, to set as your goal to live a wise and virtuous life embodied in the gentleman's rule, to live up to the high ideals articulated in the mission of this college, to think critically, act responsibly, lead effectively, and live humanely, then please stand with confidence and pride. It's my distinct honor for the very first time to continue the tradition begun by the first professor of Wabash College, Caleb Mills, and using his bell, ring you in to the good company of Wabash men. Men of the Wabash class of 2024, we're about to start a long, strange trip together. Let's make it a great one. Welcome to the Brotherhood. Thank you, President Feller, and congratulations, Wabash men of the class of 2024. Before closing, I'd like to thank the small army of people. You, you can be seated, guys. Uh, I'd like to thank the small army of people who've made today possible. The admissions office, the Healthy Campus Task Force, and the student members of the care teams, the staffs of Bon Appetit and Campus Services, the whole student life team, but especially Associate Dean Heather Thrush and her student orientation mentors. And last but certainly not least, thank you so much to the parents and guardians who have made it possible for these young men to continue their education at this special place. To you, we say welcome to the Wabash family, and to the men of class of 2024, welcome 
to the Brotherhood. Our program will conclude with a recorded Glee Club performance of our alma mater, the lyrics for which are found on the inside of the back cover of your orientation booklet. Please rise for the alma mater. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening.